going on guys? I'm Adam Calhoun. Today I'm going to tell you the story of me and church. My good friend Ryan Upchurch. There's a lot of people that think they know or like to tell their own stories. They have no idea. Um, but I don't think I've ever told this publicly, you, you know, how this all happened. So most of you should know, um, obviously I worked in the trades my whole life. I was in the union and uh, one day I made a viral video. I'm sorry, bro. I'm just here to see Sarah. What do you mean, bro? I'm not your bro. And then I made a whole bunch more and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just putting out content and I, because people liked it, so I just kept doing it. And I did that for about a year. One day, someone was like, oh man, Ryan Upchurch just posted this meme that you made. And I was like, "Who?" I didn't know who Ryan Upchurch was. You know, I'm just... I'm just a regular guy working. I was never on the internet or nothing like that. I'm like, who the hell is Ryan Upchurch? So I go in into his page. And I'm like, hey, man, that's my meme. You can tag me in that shit. And to which uh, there was no response because there was probably like 50,000 comments. So you probably never even see my comment. But some time went on and people are like, you and Ryan Upchurch should work together, whatever, whatever. And then one day he messaged me. And I actually saw it and we got on the phone. And we talked with each other. And um, the next thing you know, I fly out to Nashville. Church came and picked me up. And I can't remember which truck he's had. He's had, you know, Ryan was his car. He's got a lot. Um, we went to his his old trailer that he used to live in. And he had a studio uh, right on the side of the trailer. And, you know, we I just went down there to make a funny video with him. And actually, the first funny video that we ever made together was the, Hello, comrades. What's up, comrades? What's up? Comrades, I'm Lord Virgin Pecker. So when I was down there, on the, this is five years ago. Me and Church have been friends for five years. So for all those people that are always in the comments, like, "Where's Ryan? Where's Church? Are you guys still friends?" Bro, we lit. We have lives. We have different lives. We're we're busy. We're running different businesses, and obviously our music careers and stuff like that. Um, me and Ryan Upchurch have been friends for five years and, and are still friends to this day. Uh, I consider him my brother and I, I would do anything for him. If you ever needed me, I'm always going to be there. I love you, bro. So anyways, this is the part. Uh, we had we had got done filming the, the, the Antifa, the Comrades video, and he's in his studio. And at that point in time, he was actually writing and recording the Black on Black Johnny Cash. Black on Black Johnny Cash. And I'm sitting there. You know, on the couch, and I'm I'm watching what he's doing and stuff, and I he he's got the beat playing, and he's you know he's writing in his phone, and I'm writing on paper, and he looks over and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I was like, "Ah, I'm just writing lyrics down." He's like, "You rap?" And I'm like, "No, I mean I used to back in the day, you know." And he's like, "No way!" And he's like, "Let me hear it." So I I jump up and 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 you know we're just in the studio, and I put I put the headphones on and I rap what I wrote. And he's like, "That's crazy!" Like, whoa, you know. Little did he know, and maybe little do you guys know. Back in the day, you gotta understand something. When I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, 22, you know, for many years I slept on people's couches. I was homeless. You know, I lived in like a trap house. I was I was recording rap shit. Back in the day, you talk about 99, 2000, 2001. You couldn't just go in the suburbs and go into a studio, some white dude with a studio, that wasn't a thing. You had to go to the west side of Chicago, south side of Chicago. You had to be out and doing these battles and on street corners and in these clubs, these dingy clubs and, and you know, you're trying to earn respect because you're just you're a white dude in, in basically a, a black dude's game, right? I mean, it's 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 rap, it's hip hop. So before all the funny videos and all this stuff that I've done uh, on social media, when I was a young man, I mean, that's what I thought I was gonna be in life was, I thought I was gonna be a rapper. But here is the, is the gold right here. I saw Ryan Upchurch in the studio recording a song and he was rapping and he was rapping about like some white boy shit. He didn't need acceptance for from like the black culture. He was able to just to rap about some white shit. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like my whole life I had to get acceptance from the urban community. And I see this white dude in a trailer in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, rapping about just some some shit that like I'm like, wait, you're telling me that white boys can just rap about some shit that we do and people are listening to this this is a sign let's go sign me up you know what i mean so anyways i go home and i and i think about this and i'm like this is let me see you know because i'm a rapper i can do this so you know i i wrote some some songs and i showed you know one of one of the guys and they're like dude you gotta put this out i i, I held off for a little bit anyways me and ryan still remain friends and we i went back to tennessee and we did the the video that 
that it went crazy and everybody loves the the whoa Vicky a straightener or a straightener a straightener a straightener and then I actually showed Ryan one of the songs that I had had recorded and he was like bro like this is like let's you gotta put this out so I recorded my first album Americal uh, Church was on the first single Die Tonight. And that song went crazy. Thank you to you guys and thanks for church, you know, for showing up and doing the music video and everything like that. I mean, this was a massive video. I didn't know it at the time. It was a massive song. I didn't know it at the time, but you guys know what it is. I might die tonight, but if I do, I'm gonna be okay. Just, just think about this. I was a young man at 20 doing this shit. Fast forward 15, 16 years and I see a young man Ryan Upchurch doing the shit that I loved, but I didn't have any love for it anymore because it was like, I, that's never going to happen for me. And I see this kid, he was young at the time, he he's still young, but he was really young at the time. He's only, he was only like 25. I see him rapping. He gives no fucks. He's, he's doing his thing. And, and I'm like, it, it sparked a whole new thing, a whole new uh, chapter in my life. And I, I owe me getting back into music and rap and, and shit like that to Ryan, you know, and, and that's, this is shit that people don't do, you know what I'm saying, like, they don't give respect to the motherfuckers that really got them back, or, or helped them, or, or whatever, and, and, uh, and then you hear these people, like, oh, if I had Adam's platform, I'd be as big as him, no, you wouldn't, who gave me this platform, I had this platform, I built this platform, you know what I'm saying, and, or, oh, if I had a feature from church, I'd be, I'd be, you know, you, church has done features with all these country rappers, and where are they at, I don't, they're, where are they, you know? Um, I had the, the drive, the, the ability to rap, the, 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 just the work ethic to go crazy. And I was always chasing church down, to be honest. Like, I know he did so many albums in so many years. So every year I'm pumping out as much music as I can. And, you know, at first, when, it, when, when I first started doing music, you know, everyone's comparing, like, church to me, me, uh, me to church, and, and and like talking shit and it took years to finally like get out of that shadow and be like you, you know it was it, then it was it was church and adam you know like these are the guys you know and a lot of you guys you call what we do country rap and i get it it's cool but i feel sometimes like it's selling us short church is a rapper i'm a rapper like we can hang with any like mainstream rappers. I feel like Church came in the game and changed independent rap history and, you know, made this big, like, rush of all these people being like, oh, this is country rap, country rap. And then I came in the game and was like, you know, this shit's whack. A lot of these dudes are trying to do what Ryan was doing because they're fans. And I'm like, I'm a rapper. I'm going to make these dudes have to rap. And then now you don't see none of these dudes rapping no more. You gotta, you can't just be some guy that is a fan and, and thinks you can rap. You didn't put in 20 years or all these years behind the mic and, and in a booth and, and living in uh, couches and in cars. Like, you got to be able to rap. So country rap, there's dudes, there's rap. John Brodnax, you know, like I say, church got me started. And, and I love him forever for that and always have his back. And when I got plugged in and I kept doing my thing, I've given you people like Brodnax. You know, that dude is an animal. He's he's one of the best rappers, period. And um, I've helped a lot of people out in their careers. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm always there. I always show up for, for the good guys. You know what I'm saying? I do this for the good guys. And everyone's always asking me about advice like, oh, how do I get started in music? Start and, and keep doing it and grind. I mean, you have to understand, you, you have to be obsessed. You have to be able, willing to lose comfortability, like sleeping on the floor, on a couch, in a car. You have to be able to lose your family. I, I didn't see my son when I was a young guy, like in my 20s, for a couple of years. And I, was, I wasn't the best dad ever. I, I, I lost contact with friends and family. And I mean, I, you have to be willing to lose everything. And if you're that guy and you can go that far, and, and this takes years. I was a young dude, 20 years old. This didn't happen for me for another 20 years later. Understand what I'm saying. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's my advice. You gotta be an absolute animal. Anyway, I ended up recording a whole bunch of albums and it came time for me and Church to do an album together. It just, we we're like, yo, let's do this. And that was Hooligan. Um, and I went down to Tennessee and it took us, I think like 10 days. 
and we just we went at it and, and and never stopped you know every day in the studio and pushing each other and shit like that and you know we're riding around in his lamborghini he's drinking chocolate milk and you know we're stopping at gas stations people coming up and it was just a really great experience and um it was super dope you know it's something that's timeless that hopefully lives on forever and i didn't stop there i kept going dropping more albums more albums through the whole time that's my that's my boy that's my guy out of all the guys you meet in this industry and social media and music it's it's most of them are trash people garbage human beings and you know me and ryan have been friends and still friends to this day you know there's lots of times you guys don't even know we're sitting out at, by his bonfire and uh you know just sitting there you know what i mean he's, he's been around my son and 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 <laughs> it's been a really good relationship and uh you never see me around people that that are shit people you know what i'm saying and, and i like to say the same for ryan it's actually very cool. I, I I was there with him when he had the trailer, right? And and I lived in this little shitty duplex. And then I remember when he got the house up on that hill. Ryan, I, what, what the, the house, you know what I'm talking about. I love that house. It was a beautiful house. Um, you know, and then I had, a, I had a, a townhouse. And then, you know, he got Ghost Ranch. And, you know, now I'm in this house. And it's just like... You watch our careers and you watch our life and he's became a, you know, a young man. I became an older man. <laughs> I got grays now and, you know what I mean? Taman's 22 and for everyone who's always asking and they don't know the real, the real deal. Hey, Kev, hand me that real quick. Like this music shit and, and all this social media shit, it really changed my life, my son's life, my family's life. You know what I mean? That's a picture of me and Taman, which is one of my favorite pictures, but this... This most legendary picture in my mind, in my opinion. I mean, come on, man. That's, and that's a whole other story. Jelly Roll and Struggle Jennings. I mean, those guys have helped, you know, um, those are guys that I call when I, I need an outside opinion or advice, knowledge. Jelly Roll is, is crazy with that. That's a guy that I can ask anything. He's always there. And then, of course, you got Struggle Jennings who's always like, Bubba, come on, man. It's amazing this is great you know struggles always very positive but those are the guys man struggle jennings jelly roll and upchurch and demon jones of course i call him leonard the, the the guy in my life who was my uh father figure was my grandfather and he was the best man that i knew and uh actually this is me and demon jones i call him leonard and he'll actually answer to it like when we're on when we were on our tour three years ago or whatever and you know, we're in the venue and, and I'm saying demon and he can't hear me because everyone's, you know, saying his name or my name. I'm like, hey, Leonard, he'll look across the room. You know, that's the that's a guy that's filled with knowledge. He's a good man. He's a family man. He's a is, you know, he's all about his kids. And it's just what I'm telling you guys right now is shit that's behind the scenes that you never see. Obviously, I can't tell you everything. I can only tell you, you know. A lot of questions are always asked and stuff like that. But when I came in and, and started and until now where it is now. Um, the guys that I've mentioned have grown this independent scene and this, you guys call it country rap, and that's cool. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you about it, but we've grown that scene to, to where it is today. And I'm just grateful to be a part of it. And, and, and those are, those are my friends. Those are my brothers, you know, and everyone's, a lot of people say, you know, church is number one and I'm number two and, and, and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm more like, uh. You know, even church will call me like the 50, 50 cent of this shit. And, and that's how I feel too. So, and church is just kind of a different, it's a different artist. He could do whatever. He could do country, do rock. He can, he can do that old school, like, like the oldies. He could do rap. That's the thing that I love most about this, the music that we do. And I think that's why you call it country rap because I have songs like uh, Clean Money. You know, that's not a rap song. That's just a, a badass song. I mean, you guys know it. Not sure what y'all doing, I'm putting hard work in. Yeah, this music has elements of country, elements of rock, elements of rap, and I always pay homage to the rap shit, you know. My rap knowledge goes 
deep. I mean, I, I grew up listening to Big L. I'm not talking LL Cool J, you know. I, I grew up listening to Big L, Goody Mob, you know, Old Dirty Bad, Wu Tang, uh, you know what I mean? Jay Z, The Blueprint 2 was the best, one of the best albums. I think that changed rap, uh, changed how I rap. And that's another thing you guys notice. I'm very heavy East Coast, how I rap is very heavy old school East Coast. You know, even Dipset, that shit was banging. Cameron is one of my favorite. Obviously, Outkast, uh, a lot of the Southern rappers. I mean, there was just different eras, and, and I've, I've been around them all. And, and as far as music in my ear, I just, I love it. But anyways, that's the story of me and my good friend, Ryan Upchurch. That's my brother. For everyone asking, there's your video. I love you guys.